Welcome back to the Women of the Bible podcast. This is the Elizabeth season, and you're in the Revive Our Hearts living room. Yep. Uh, we are walking through this Bible study together along with you. I hope that you are gathering with friends as you read it. Um, Bible study is always better with friends, I think. <laughs> and I am with some friends, uh, and if we were actually in my living room, there I always go. start Bible studies <laughs> with a quirky question. So this time, as we are in week two, I'm hoping you can answer an age-old question for our listeners. I need to know the best mascara, because my quest oh. for the perfect mascara is never ending, and I'm hoping <laughs> that you have figured it out. So tell us your name, and tell us your mascara recommendations. Uh, <laughs> that's a hard one. It is hard. hard questions today <laughs> because I normally don't wear it. You don't? I normally don't. I, I just have it for very yeah. like... Your hair is so dark. It must just show up that much. If I went without mascara, it would be a sad day. Yeah. You too. I would look ill. Yeah. <laughs> well, my name is Alejandra and I like cover girl mascara. <laughs> okay, we're going with... Cover can't girl. go more simple than there you go so, all right yeah. and you're up this is a commercial my name is meg <laughs> and i'm a cover girl <laughs> but the cheap stuff is the best it is. it's the i do the it's the lash blast volume oh. it's in the purple one right? it's orange orange oh. Really, my, my quest orange. has been for years to find the purple. I've tried it's all cover of them. girl. Yeah. Yep, and it's okay. cheap. You can get it at Walmart, and it oh. comes in a two pack now. Does it give you raccoon eyes? It does not. That's oh. where no, I struggle. No, it does not. And it's there's no little <laughs> dusties underneath my lashes either. Okay, so no, those of you who are listening to the podcast, you just yeah. got some bonus yeah. tips, some mascaras to try. That's I've tried one. like. I'm a little bit embarrassed to say this, but I've tried the really expensive. Oh yeah, kind, yeah. which is really expensive. Yep. If you have daughters, never buy expensive makeup. Good advice. Because it I don't have any daughters, yeah. for the record. But praise God, your sons are not trying. <laughs> yeah, that's right. They're not. No but mascara. At our the daughters house. will just rack it. So I think that's why I go cheap. They love yeah. mascara. Yeah. That's good. All right. Well, we're not here to talk about mascara. <laughs> we're here to talk <laughs> about the good Elizabeth stuff. Yeah. and what Elizabeth has to teach us about disappointment. Mm -hmm. So. In episode one, we took a, our first peek at Elizabeth's story. Her whole story is what we know of it is found in just one chapter in the mm -hmm. Bible, all of it in Luke 1. And I think a lot of times when we look at Elizabeth, we look at her kind of as background noise to the arri arrival mm -hmm. of the Savior, yeah. which all of us are background noise yeah. to the arrival of the Savior. But um, we just get these snippets of her story kind of leading up to the nativity and um, the announcement that Mary is going to have Jesus. We do know that Elizabeth faced years, we don't know how many years, yeah. of infertility. What the text tells us is that her and her husband, Zechariah, were advanced in years. It's a nice way of saying they mine were says old. very old. Very, oh, is that what your translation That's what mine, it's very kind about it. They very were very old. old. Very old <laughs> and no children. Yeah. Okay, and so um, we, we have to assume a little bit that they wanted a child, although mm -hmm. when the angel appears to Zechariah, he says, the child that you've prayed for. Yes. Yeah. So we know they prayed for this child, yeah, and they faced a lot of years of disappointment. Mm -hmm. And so we're looking at her as sort of an example of how can we be women who face disappointment mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. grace. Mm -hmm. And the title of this session is The Bigger Picture, and what I... I'm so excited to talk about, really, mm -hmm. is that how our disappointments can be an opportunity for us to preach mm -hmm. the gospel. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they become these pearls, right? They, right? they were a source of frustration, of irritation to us, but they become an opportunity for us to share the gospel. So mm -hmm. we'd have to know a little bit of cultural context. Um, that's where... The, that's where it's good for us to read more than just the verse or the story, have a broader understanding of scripture. Mm -hmm. But likely there was an assumption among Elizabeth and Zechariah's friends, mm -hmm. among the people that they went to the temple with, that they had done something wrong. Mm -hmm. yeah. That there was some sin mm -hmm. that caused Elizabeth's womb to close. And I think sometimes... Many, many years later, we still have that same assumption. We do. I yeah. mean, centuries later, yes. we still are dealing with that. Do you ever that. feel like when you face a disappointment, or maybe when somebody else, else faces yeah. a disappointment, yeah. is there ever a corner of your heart that thinks, who sinned mm -hmm. here? Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. sin caused mm -hmm. this? Yeah. Can you speak to any examples of that, either of you? Yeah, definitely. Um, when something goes wrong, mm -hmm. I mean, if you're in a car and the car breaks down, definitely sure. you're going to open the hood and check everything sure. to make sure that things are functioning well sure. 
you might call out for help, but definitely you're going to check in the inside. Mm -hmm. So when something goes wrong in our home, we're checking on the inside of our home, or sometimes we go inward in the inside of our hearts. Yep. Um, or if it's someone else, you try to poke in there. Sure. Um, or question, hey, you know, maybe you should have, mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, those thoughts really cross our mind. Mm -hmm. um, and usually you don't have the answer. Sure. It, mm -hmm. It's hard to see both things at the same time. You going through the struggle and also analyzing what did we do right. wrong. And right. it's true that the Lord will allow consequences of sin in mm -hmm. our lives. Yeah, yes. exactly. So it's not that it's never the case. Yeah, there are struggles that we have actually, you know, right. nurture ourselves. Right. Yes. Yeah. And I think especially when it's a disappointment that goes over a long span of time yes. and mm -hmm. you've looked for the answers and you've mm -hmm. dug through all of the why's and how do we fix it i think that's when it's especially tempting whether it's it's you or you're looking in as a friend that then you go okay we've tried all of these other things it must be something we've done mm -hmm. this has to be a consequence because what else would the answer be the way i tend to think about it is sort of little girlish like why is he mad at me yeah, yeah. he must be mad at me yeah. and and i'll pray all the prayers that you pray like search my mm -hmm. heart oh lord and see if there be any way yeah. in me and and i'll just repent and not know what i'm <laughs> repenting of um one of our little boys we call him noble the repenter because he'll come to us all upset <laughs> and we'll be like what's the matter and he'll say i i i thought about doing something bad oh, no. <laughs> and we're like buddy until you till you actually <laughs> sin you don't have yeah, to tell mommy and daddy okay. about it but i'll have a little bit oh. of that attitude like like, I must have done something to disappoint yeah. you, Lord, and I don't know what it is, yeah. and I'm so sorry. And he's going, it baby girl, devastating. Yeah. Sure, yeah. it could be <laughs> devastating when, when really the source of disappointment, as in the case of Elizabeth, mm -hmm. um, was not a consequence yeah. of sin. Mm -hmm. In some ways, it might be because the Lord wants to use that um, for something better and for his glory. So there's a story that we talk about in session two. Mm -hmm. You girls have your Bibles. And if you're listening with us and you're not in your car, grab your Bible uh, and turn to John 9. If you're in your car, please do not try to look this up um, and drive. Um, but here in John 9, Jesus heals a man who was born blind. And so I'm just going to give us a, a quick read over through these verses, John 9, 1 through 12. As he passed by, and he, there is Jesus, he saw a man blind from birth. So like Elizabeth, this is a man who's experienced disappointment for a yeah. long mm -hmm. time. Again, we don't get the exact mm -hmm. number of years. but mm -hmm. And his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned? This man or his parents that he was born blind. Jesus answered, it was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. If you are listening and you have access to your Bible, I would encourage you to underline yeah. that sentence. I have it underlined in my Bible. Um, we must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said these things, he spit on the ground and made mud with the saliva. Then he anointed the man's eyes with the mud and said to him, go wash in the pool of saliva which means sent. Underline that in your Bible. Mm -hmm. So he went and washed and came back seeing. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar were saying, is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Mm -hmm. Someone said, it is he. Others said, no, but it's like him. He kept saying, I'm the man. So they said to him, then how are your eyes opened? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud and anointed my eyes and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and received my sight. And they said to him, where is he? He said, I don't know. So this is within a generation of Elizabeth's pregnancy. We know that because Jesus is walking the earth. And still this idea that because this man is facing this, we could call it a disappointment or challenge or disability or pain. Somebody must have sinned. Right. That's what the disciples are asking. Right. That's their first question. That's their first question. <laughs> the disciples who walked with Jesus, who had heard yeah. the, Jesus mm -hmm. teach at some point, who had heard some version of the gospel Jesus had been teaching, they're going, what caused this? What mm -hmm. caused this disappointment? And Jesus, of course, always in teacher mode, mm -hmm. uses it to teach. And he says this, it was not this man, not yeah. this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. I have written here in my Bible, sometimes hardship is allowed so that God may be glorified. And so I think sometimes the source of disappointment is not sin. Mm -hmm. It is the glory of God. And that flips a switch for me. Can you think of a time in your own life where I'm sure in the middle of it, it wasn't clear, 
But in hindsight, you can see, wow, that season of disappointment or struggle was for the glory of God. Meg, can you think of an example? Yeah, and uh, you mentioned that maybe in, in the middle of it we didn't see, but it was actually a situation where my dad really brought it to our attention as kids. My younger sister had a brain injury when she was two, and so all growing up she has dealt with seizures, and she and I shared a bedroom growing up. Um, and one particular night I woke up to her in a grand mal seizure, mm. which is about the most horrific thing you can imagine watching a person going through. Um, and once she had calmed down and it was over and um, the ambulance had left and we were all just sitting in the living room together at, you know, I don't know, two o'clock in the morning trying or something. To yes, yeah. trying to breathe and just once again going, why? Mm. And, um, and my dad said something that at the time I didn't comprehend that becomes clearer with time. And it was just that, you know what, Stephanie is chosen God trusts her with this disappointment mm. and he will work his goodness through it. And I love that he had the wisdom at the time to not question, what has Stephanie done wrong? What have sure. we as parents done wrong? Sure. Um, but to say, no, God has trusted her. Mm. It's an honor yeah. that he uses disappointments to work his glory into our lives. Um, at the time, I just remember thinking, what? Sure. <laughs> um, but Does that becomes, work? yeah, it becomes clearer and clearer with time. And oh, I can see that in Stephanie's life, but also in the life of our entire family, learning yeah. to walk through that disappointment and to see it as he's bringing fruit out of this hard, hard time. And your dad could have faced that same circumstance, mm -hmm. which he's had to face for many years and yes. will face until the Lord mm -hmm. heals your sister. Um, he could have faced that same circumstance, kicking and screaming, yep. you know, raising a rebel fist at the Lord yeah, and I did. saying, <laughs> that you don't me. love me, you're not good. Yes. Or where I tend to default is Eeyore, like, oh, mm -hmm. man, mm -hmm. God doesn't love yeah. me. Um, and feel some sort of misplaced shame yes. or guilt. Yes. And not, not that it wasn't hard. Yes. But he faced that hard thing uh -huh. with trust in the Lord that the Lord was going to already bringing right. redemption yes. in your sister's life, yes. in your family's life. Mm -hmm. And that's really an example we see in Elizabeth. I mean, she has this, this trust in the Lord mm -hmm. and the Lord does bring plenty of mm -hmm. redemption through her, mm -hmm. right? Lord, she, she, she gets to be the mother of John the yeah. Baptist yeah. who declares the way. Um, but there's this sentence that is in the study that I find great hope in, which is I wouldn't choose this, mm -hmm. but I embrace it. Mm -hmm. And I think there's um, a tenderness in saying to the Lord, I don't want this. Mm -hmm. your, your sister doesn't want to continue mm -hmm. to have many, many seizures yep. a day. Yep. Your dad doesn't want his girl to not be healed. Mm -hmm. But the only way I think we can embrace it is because we trust God's right. promise right. that he's first going to work it to our good. Yep. And then he's going to be glorified right. through it. So there's this, whatever we face, we can look it in the eye and say, I wouldn't choose this. Mm -hmm but I embrace it. We see that in Christ, really. Right. Um, as he's going to the cross, he's honest about the fact that if it be possible, I'd rather yeah. this cup pass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we would say it, maybe I wouldn't choose this. Yeah. Right. And then he gets to the best but in all of scripture, yeah. but not my will, but yours. your will be done. And it's always whatever we say, it's what, what comes after the but that is, reveals <laughs> our real heart, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so his ultimate surrender to the father is I don't want this yeah. mm -hmm. I sometimes marvel that in his sovereignty he knew every thorn that was going to pierce his head mm -hmm. he knew every millisecond he yeah. was going to have to hang on that yeah. cross there was no blindness to it mm -hmm. um, but could it I, be we still have lists in sure. our Christian mm -hmm. circles of do's and don'ts sure to have a happy life I think so you know that book you yeah. glance at as you're walking at the bookstore or a library and it's like you know nine steps to sure. have a cleaner home 
hey, sure. we know. We know it's uh, at least yeah, 900 yeah. steps. Yeah, exactly, sure. daily. Or, or five steps to a happier life. Mm -hmm. And it's even in Christian bookstores. Sure. Like, you know, there's yeah, nothing absolutely. wrong with picking up that book and looking through it. And I think we all have that temptation yep. of making the list of the right man yep. or making the list of how the right family should mm -hmm. look or yep. making our projection. Some people have, you know, a board and they put pictures of how mm -hmm. they project their next 10 years of life. Sure. And, mm -hmm. you know, think of the good things things and you will attract it. Sure. Right. And as Christians, it seems like in the word, we're totally uh, challenged yep. to a very different lifestyle yep. of God setting the path mm -hmm. for us to walk on. Mm -hmm. And trusting that path that he chooses. Because I want yeah. his goodness worked in my life. Mm -hmm. Sure. But mm -hmm. I don't necessarily like the way he's choosing to do it. I love this passage that the Lord chose mud to yeah. work his healing in mm -hmm. this man's life because right. isn't that what it feels like so right. much going through disappointments? It's you could have used something else, right. yeah. but you slapped some mud on my right. eyes. Yeah. Or we back to your list, we think I got to to follow these checkpoints yes. and the Lord yes. can just pick up some dirt. Yep. It happens yep. in marriage. Sure. Like we all, when we were single, made our list of, you know, the man I married should be this, this. And, you know, I'm not trying to discourage <laughs> younger <laughs> girls on, or ladies on do not make the list. No, that's interesting because well, that, that, list that, that sets you, <laughs> <Sure>. you know, <laughs> that sets some kind of guidance. Sure. You know? Sure. Um, but in the sense of, wow, I, he had all this before we, married and now sure. we are married and it seems he's a stranger. He's sure. not this person. Sure. And then you feel disappointed because sure. it's not going as mm. you plan. Yeah. But if we think of it's not my life, yeah. it's not my plans, it's his life, yes. it's his plans and it's for his glory, yes. then I think we will embrace things as they either go through him or from his hand. Yep. For this season of life, this cup was prepared for me mm. and was given to me by a loving father. Sure, and it's the, the choice is ours. The, the circumstances, we don't get to choose. Mm -hmm. The disappointments, we don't get to choose. The timeline, we don't get to choose. But what we do get to choose mm -hmm. is whether our focus will be on our comfort or God's glory. And that's a constant choice. Mm -hmm. You know, I wake up in the morning and that's the choice. Mm -hmm. Is today going to be about my comfort, which is what I crave, mm -hmm. or God's glory? And that informs every yeah, decision that I make does. after that. Mm -hmm. And it, will, it doesn't make hard things less hard. Um, but I think we struggle when hard things feel meaningless. Mm -hmm. Like to have mm -hmm. to go through something hard and it be oh, meaningless yes. is unbearable. Um, we have four sons, three of which have serious kidney issues. Um, and uh, I remember with the first just feeling like, why? Yeah. Why what should this sweet everything? baby boy yeah. have to endure this? And then the second one came along. He had healthy kidneys. We thought we were kind of through the woods on it get pregnant again, and Judah the third has serious kidney issues. And they had to do um, surgery on his kidneys when he was just 10 months old. And I, they took him from me. They take your baby, and you, there's this point of no return where you hand your baby over to the surgeons. And I was in the emotional fetal position then, and then soon and physically I curled up in the waiting room. My pastor was there. My mom was there. My sister was there. My husband was there. And this is why you have to have people of faith around you. Um, and what they were saying to me is things like, the Lord is going to use mm -hmm. Judah's life. The Lord is going to use this moment. And I can endure it for that. I yeah. can endure almost anything uh, yeah. for the glory of God. Mm -hmm. If I go, okay, mm -hmm. this, I don't like this. But if God be, could be glorified, yeah. then this has value. And yeah. that's what we see in Elizabeth's life, yes. right? The Lord used her infertility. There'd be a little bit less wonder to the story, I think, if at the point of John's birth, Elizabeth already had yeah. this brood of children yeah. and the Lord hadn't had her waiting all of these years, yeah. right? There's something about the story that's like the Lord was in that, mm -hmm. right? How deep, um, difficult circumstances dig into our lives and into our emotions. Um, and I find that is, that is just so important, you know, in happiness and joy, there's very little time to, to take aside and, and just think, you know, what do I believe? Sure. Who am I putting my trust in? Sure. What do I even think Christianity 
is. Um, mm. Losing my dad three months ago, I, I asked the Lord why, and, and, and remembering now, he said, you know, I want you to meet me now as your father. Mm. And even being a believer since I was seven, I probably was never so deep into meeting God as my father. Sure. So thinking, you know, when we go through struggles, what, God, what do you want me to do with yeah. this? Sure. Yeah. You know, I might not respond the right way. Right. Sure. But asking him, you know, how, how can I honor you and how can I please you in this mm -hmm. process? It could be short. It could sure. be long. We definitely know how the story is going to end if sure. we read Revelation. Sure. But in the process, you know, there's a bit of a bridge till sure. we get there. It's a long <laughs> bridge. <laughs> you sure. know, and, and just having the hope of um, God is, is with me and maybe he wants me to know him in a different way yep. yeah. than I didn't know him before. And what we read in the book of Acts chapter 20, verse 24, it says, but I do not count my life of any value mm -hmm. nor as precious to myself mm -hmm. if only I may finish my course and the ministry that I receive from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace mm -hmm. of God. Love that. Wow, we have so many plans. Yep. You know, we have so many dreams and so many hopes. And there's so many quotes that help you pursue that. But I think this verse really brings us down to earth and shows us, you know, um, do not account your life mm -hmm. as your own. Sure. There is a purpose and it's to fulfill the ministry God has called you. And for Jesus, that ministry was the cross. And for John, that ministry was enduring pain, hardship, mm -hmm. death for yep. his faith, uh, difficulties. Um, and we're not going to be exempt from that. And Elizabeth, it was waiting and yeah. waiting and waiting and waiting. And then even th the strange ways that, that the Lord finally <laughs> reveals, yeah. he's going to answer this prayer with a husband who's yes. struck mute. And then there's more waiting. And then there's a pregnancy in advanced years, which couldn't yeah. have been fun. Yes. And all for the glory of God. And so I think what changes the scenery of everything for us is when we realize my unfulfilled longings are gospel opportunities. I, I pray this prayer pretty often when something hard happens. I will pray, Jesus, I need you so much and I know it now. Um, I, I forgot for a minute. Yeah, yes. we do forget I got amnesia how yes. desperate I was for you and I know it now. Yes. And so I would say to the woman listening, um, that whatever disappointments it is that you face, you can pray that prayer. I need you so much, mm -hmm. and I know it now. And I wouldn't choose this, but I embrace it because it's an opportunity to display the gospel. Mm -hmm.